Greetings, we are Metal Kids. Welcome to our studio. Um, we're in Sydney. We wish we were in Twin Cities for the current, um, but happy to be playing some songs for you. This is called Stack and Chairs. in the chairs when the world turns on you I will be there and I will be there That was just Metal Kids live here for another one of the Current's virtual sessions. I'm Maddie, and today I have the pleasure of sitting down with Hannah Joy of the Metal Kids and uh, talking a little bit about their new album, Today We're the Greatest. But before we get into uh, chatting, we're going to listen to a couple more songs. Stop the day, right? Join the Marcus say something. Everyone be nice, and I'm not even nice myself. No, I don't even like myself. Shouting at everyone, I shout at every person. Do not ignore me. Are you for me or against me or yourself against me? And everyone here is. I feel so.
Trust you when you were lying all the time. And how am I supposed to know you when you are drunk all the time? And I got questions and you got answers, and I'm not sure if they're fact or fiction. And I got questions and you got answers, and I'm not Hello, Hannah Joy. It is so good so sitting down with you. How are you doing today? Hey, good, good to be with you. It's very mm-hmm. fresh here in Australia, but very happy to see you. <laughs> what have <laughs> you been, how the past few days, I know your new album came out on March 19th. Um, how's it felt having it out in the world? Yeah, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. I mean, we made it over a year ago, so it's kind of been haunting us. <laughs> but um. No, it feels really good. It kind of, it, it's brought a lot of energy around it for us again. So um, it's been a very special time for the band. Mm-hmm. Like your kind of feelings around the album shifted from the, t- from the time that you recorded it a little over a year ago? Um, yeah, I kind of almost like forgot what it was. And so it's been really nice, really nice hearing it again and revisiting, visiting it. And um, um, actually still after all this time, this time it's, um, like a cool representation of us and, and um, expresses us still in this time. So it feels, which is really nice as an artist to still feel still like um, connected and, and um, you know, yeah, like the songs even, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is your second album. You released another one back in 2018. How did it feel or what was the differences between recording Today We're the Greatest compared to your first release? This one was pretty different. We um, went into a studio for the first time, which is kind of big for us because usually we never leave the house to make music. And um, we tried the studio before, but it kind of scared us. So for this, um, we we took the step and we did it. And we had a really awesome time. We did it with Lars Stauffels in LA. Um, and even just having like someone else's voice creative voice in that process was very different, but, um, very wonderful for us too. Um, so yeah, it was, it was cool. Like I think, you know, Lost Friends, our first record was um, made. A lot of that was actually, I wrote in America while we were touring so much. And, 
um, really influenced by kind of the live show energy. And this is a little bit more reflective and has a bit more space. So, um, it, 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 it does have a different vibe. Um, but I think we were really wanting that to kind of like go into new territory, um, kind of, you know, express another side of our sound. Um, so that's, I think that's why we tried to make it quite differently. Different. Yeah, it's kind of interesting now thinking about the timing that you guys kind of wrote this introspective record with all this space before any of us entered lockdown. And now down kind of feels like it fits a little bit of the mood that a lot of us have been in. Yeah, it's yeah. true. A lot of people have asked like, oh, did you write this? You know, um, mm -hmm. or some of the themes like really relate to kind of pandemic times, um, mm -hmm. which I don't know. I don't, we just felt like isolated and lonely <laughs> before the pandemic. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned that when you were writing Lost Friends, there was a lot of sort of um, time pressure because you were on the road constantly. But um, I understand that there was kind of a different time pressure when you were recording Today We're the Greatest of uh, stuff, the fact that you had your child on the way. How was working within those time constraints? Um, that was so wild. But I'm really, you know, I'm glad in some ways because, yeah, we didn't obviously know what was going to be like the year following. Um, but yeah, I was seven months pregnant and we had a big national tour in Australia when I was eight months pregnant. So we had this tiny little window to make this record. And, um, I wasn't sure how it was going to go because at that time I was like pretty huge. Um, and the baby's, you know, like sitting right on my lungs, but, um, it worked kind of well and I could actually sing two notes lower than I can now, mm -hmm. which is a bit of a stitch up because there's, because there's a song on the record where there's one note I like can't sing now. So, <laughs> I guess I'll just have to get pregnant again. <laughs> yeah, by the time live shows come back, you're going to need to hit that low note. Yeah, uh, just perpetually be pregnant. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Expand your vocal range in an unconventional way. Yeah. Um, with Middle Kids being such a live band, a band that's toured so much, how has your perspective on the project changed uh, over the past year? That's a cool question. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, like we've all really – it's been so weird for us because I think, you know, our, the existence of middle kids has been one of such touring and, um, but I think it's been a really special time for us to kind of like, just, to, you know, take a beat and then be a lot more thoughtful about where we want to go. And, um, you know, cause I think when you can get in that touring rhythm, you just kind of are moving all the time and you're very present, which is awesome, but it's, it's hard to kind of then also be like, you know, where do we want to go even creatively? Um, so it's been cool to have more space to kind of sit in the stillness of this season and, um, and even like find the music in there and just kind of like, I don't know, gear up again. Like I think now we feel like even more excited to get out there and kind of like, come on. Um, but I think it's actually, it's been hard, but I, in some ways I think it's been really good for us. Good for mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like you have a couple shows on the calendar for the next few months. Uh, how does it feel getting ready for shows for the first time in a year? So, Yeah, it's pretty wild. Like we're very lucky in Australia um, in terms of just where we're at with the COVID stuff. So, um, yeah, it's cool that we get to play these shows. Um, I think like we feel as well with this record, it will change the live show a bit too because um, it's not – it's, you know, it's not just, I, I can't just get on stage and like just rock out and be like, Bleh, and then get out of there. There are a lot more songs that, um, a bit more vulnerable and quiet. And I think I'm like, how am I going to do this? Cause this <laughs> is like new for me, um, yeah. but which I think is really good and important mm -hmm. as an artist to kind of stretch. And, you know, so I think we actually feel really excited to mm -hmm. have this kind of new, um, energy as well in our live show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you kind of mentioned that there's so many lyrics on this album that are so vulnerable and so personal. Is that something that comes naturally to you in songwriting or is it a challenge to really put yourself out there like that um, with your music? I think that um, I think it is a challenge in some ways. In, mm -hmm. I feel like when I, I write music, a lot of it is quite subconscious or just kind of is whatever flows out. Um, so I think like I just probably a lot of that was due to being pregnant and writing and being in a certain place, you know, feeling quite reflective um, or in quite being like, 
what is life? I'm about to have a child. I need to figure it out. Um, so and I, I think I'm just generally striving to be more vulnerable as a person. And I think that always um, infiltrates your art. And so I think there is a beautiful relationship with just your own personal journey and then how that comes out. And I just think that's been probably a natural flow from there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the title of this album is Today We're the Greatest, and that's that last track, which is a pretty big number, very emotional track on the album. Uh, how did you decide on that as the title for the album, and what does that represent for you? Well, we liked that as kind of like a cool proclamation, and especially because the record finishes with that. And I think that song really embodies a lot of what we sing about and what we're trying to explore as a band, um, mainly being, you know, like, how can we live well? And in this song, a lot of it's about kind of just, you know, living our small little lives and, and showing up and being present and, you know, doing the boring everyday things, but also like you get the magical, beautiful things. And then there's also the lonely, you know, grief ridden things. And that's life. That's all of that. And a great life is when you can be present and live all of that. And I think it was cool to kind of shape the record around that um yeah that kind of track and title yeah definitely like celebrating those kind of everyday things and not missing out on that is like certainly present throughout a lot of the lyrical themes here mm. Mm -hmm. yeah I had read that you and Tim um wrote the song are you for me which we had just heard earlier today um from scratch and that was kind of a different songwriting approach to you could you talk about that a little bit a little bit yeah, um, that was a really cool thing. We because we're married, and I actually we don't really write together. I will usually write a song, and then I'll give it to him of like tinkle with it. And um, we were in LA, and I was doing a bunch of writing over there, and we decided that we would do like a session together, kind of like like uh, we were like he would be the producer and I would be the artist, and we'd meet mm -hmm. at a studio and write a song kind mm -hmm. of like role play <laughs> but in for work mm -hmm. and then um it was just really cool we just we did that and carved that space out and this mm -hmm. song just kind of came and there was a really exciting energy and we just loved making it together mm -hmm. um so it was a very cool experience and I think probably quite significant in terms of um showing us that you know that is something we can do together mm -hmm. um and yeah, it was, it was really fun. Yeah, that's awesome. To, ex to explore like both the personal and like the musical sides of that relationship is really, really cool. I think you yeah. can definitely hear it on that track as well, that it feels like you have both of those things kind of meshing. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Hannah Joy, for sitting down with me today. Um, this has been another session with The Current. You can check out Metal Kid's newest record, Today We're the Greatest. want to give thanks to Veronica Rodriguez, the producer or the engineer for today's session, as well as producers Jesse Weiza and Derek Stevens. Also, thanks to the members of Minnesota Public Radio for making it all possible.